win. Um, the Last Dance, episodes 9 and 10, were last night. We're going to recap it. We're going to react to it. All that wonderful stuff. Michael Jordan, uh, maybe, at, I'm not going to say polarizing because he's not polarizing, uh, maybe the most beloved sports figure in the history of organized sports in this country. I'll Would you say that? that? Um, yep. He is the most famous athlete maybe ever globally. Yep. I like agree it, with that. It is and this absurd. was before a time where anybody could really market themselves. 100%. I mean, Nike marketed the hell out of him. But, but he didn't have social media. He didn't have any ways of reaching all these other people in all these other countries. And yet, they all know who the hell he is. And because he could play like nobody else. 100%. So, I wrote down a few notes. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about episode 9. Larry Bird, the coach. Michael Jordan played in an era where he got to play against Larry Bird the player, and then he played against Larry Bird, the coach. And I found it very interesting that at the end of that Pacer series, the last thing that Larry Bird said to him before he walked off was, uh, you be F-U. That was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Lane Stapp Gaming said, never watched The Last Dance. I've heard about it. I just never had time to watch it. Well, we're going to give some spoilers here. Of yeah. course, the spoiler is that, ta-da, they won the title in 98. <laughs> so everybody knew that was going to happen. It's, it's just really all the good. stuff if that went the into time, it. I think it's getting on Netflix now Now that ESPN's finished it, right? I think it's like another week or so, but yeah, it's going to yeah. be on Netflix. There's a window of time yeah. at some point in time. Netflix was part of the producers, which means they're getting the rights to this thing when it was done. Well, it'll be on ESPN Plus and on so it, Netflix. It started but, off nine. I was so pissed off. I had not one friend to text with. During this thing during, live, because well, all live. you sons of bitches are all busy doing other stuff at nine o'clock at night. That's what well, because I we just got the boy down. We just <laughs> I call bullshit on all that. By the way, I did all that. I did all watch that. all of it last night. Uh, Carlos Carlo said, "Prepared at all? This is a lack of preparation on y'all's part." Carlos <laughs> said, "As a Bulls fan, it frustrates me that I wasn't alive during the Bulls championship years." But this documentary oh. made me feel like I was there for every single moment. You got to see it, and that's awesome. Man, that's awesome. Carlos, how old are you, man? Well, I mean, if you're, I mean, yeah, if he was born in 2000, he's 20 years old. Uh, look, I was a Knicks fan when all this was going on, so so at the time, I hated the Bulls. I respect that them. Doesn't make, that, 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 that literally lines up with everything I know about you. Bama fan, Steeler fan, Knicks fan. That's, well, that's it, all I need to know. It, Knicks fan because they win all the time? Oh, I mean, sure, give sure. me a break. Come on. When, when you like them in the 90s, yeah, because of Patrick Ewing and all that. Yeah, sure. They didn't win. They won Michael Jordan won everything, man. <laughs> I was only Not a Knicks before. fan because of Latrell Sprewell. That's it. Anyway. That's it. Um, um, so, so he, oh, he said he's 21. Man, we got some young dudes watching this. I'm good how, with how it. They, how's that young? That's he's that's 21. Like right how's the demographic? 18 to 25, 35. Well, no, typically our demographic is 24, anywhere from 24 to 59. Well, but typically in the 30s, <laughs> like that's that's our main thing. But yeah, that t- I'm good with 21. It's all good. Hey, he can drink. That's all good. He can gamble. That's the biggest thing, right? Anyway, Reggie Miller. Absolute beast. Uh, the Pacers, I mean, that, that 98 year, they had studs, man. Like, if, if do you ever look back at some of your favorite sports teams and think, man, if, oh, Matt Miller said he's 22. Man, wait, yeah, all right, all right. Hopefully, y'all can take some of these lessons we're giving you and just apply them. Listen to Chris. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> Not responsible uh, for the way your life turns out. The pa- So, the Pacers having dudes that year, Chris Mullen, Rick Smith, Reggie, you know, all that kind of mess. Mark Jackson, um, all of this stuff going in. Hey, good Lord, Lane Staff Gaming said I'm 16. Hey, look, you you got a lot to learn, brother. It's all good. Just keep following this. You're channel. just fine. You're, You're just fine. fine. You're fine. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, we're we gonna on. give you lessons. Do you ever You're look this at- whole thing up? By the way, <laughs> episode nine starts out absolutely on. Fire. Yes. On fire. With the Pacers series. The very series. first scene, the very first 20 seconds of the damn thing, Michael Jordan and, and Reggie Miller fist fight. Yeah, Boom. that's true. Turn on the show, bam. We're getting into it right now. These two blokes don't like each other. They respect one another, but they don't like one another. And they are going at it. And Reggie ain't taking no shit from Michael. No, you got that right. You got that's that right. That's how the whole thing started in nine. And I was like, holy crap. 
they didn't they didn't ease into this one at all, man. They just came in hot and fast. Hey, Damian Estrada, by the way, said he's 27. So we yeah, we got some we got some dudes. I'm feeling like I'm in good company right now. What the question I'm asking you about the Pacers, because that team was absolutely stacked. They were loaded, right? If it had not been for the Bulls, I think the Pacers would have won the championship. Yes, year. but the East was so much better than the West uh, in those 90 years. Yes, agreed. But uh, my question to you is, do you have a favorite team that you know was loaded that if it was not for one other team that was like a dynastic kind of team that you know that they would have won a championship at some point? That's a weird question to ask. Because like, me being a Knicks fan... Back because in the day, at some point, I mean, I, like, at some point, it's a weird way to finish that. Uh, what uh, were there any years that you felt like the Browns were good enough, but like the Steelers nope. got in the way or what? No, no, nope. never, nope. <laughs> what about the Red Sox? 2008, 18 and 0, <laughs> Patriots. That's it. Damn Giants. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I mean, y'all, y'all I mean, at least won championships. I don't championships. know how to answer that question. No. I mean, that's a good point. You're you're a Boston sports fan, so I mean, but there's not a lot of like great team. Yes, yes. The year before the year that they broke the curse, absolutely. Grady Little leaves Pedro in too long. Aaron fucking Boone hits one to the damn moon, and and, and the and the Sox end up with the you know the Yanks in their ass again. And it's just it's just whatever. Yes, I think if they'd have won that series, they'd have won the World Series. Absolutely. Yeah. But they won it the next year, and then they won four more after that, and the Yankees have won more. There you go. Uh, Carlos said, Gary, you're right about the, um, oh, Damien said the 76ers with AI. Yeah, I, I could believe that. But who stopped AI? Was it Kobe? Yeah, it was Kobe. Like, it was, no, it was during that whole. No, because they never made the finals. Say what? So it couldn't have been Kobe that stopped them. Yeah, that's who beat them in the finals, wasn't it? Well, yeah. Oh, they made one, they, he made one final. He made final, one finals, right? yeah. Okay. Because I'm, right. I'm not saying, like, every single year the same team beats them. I'm saying, like, you had one fantastic year and you ran up against the dynasty. But this was just, like, the way you're asking this is the Pistons won all the time. And they kept the Knicks and the Celtics and the, you know, uh, the, the, the Bulls But even the Celtics winning. won and a And then ton. the Celtics like, won for a while. And they kept all those other teams Yeah, but the winning. Pacers never won one. Yes, the Pacers never yeah. won one. They could have won this one. Yeah. But you could say the exact same thing about the Suns and Barkley. I mean... Yeah, that team was stupid loaded. Oh, one hundred percent. And Barkley was without question the second best player in the world at that time. It's just he had and, to go up against the best player, and it wasn't close. And he had to go up against the best. Damian said, uh, "Damn it, the Bears should have won the Super Bowl in 06. Yeah, ran up against uh, Peyton Manning. Uh, Twenty sixteen. Matt Miller said, "OKC still depressed uh, because I became an OKC fan because of KD because I'm a Longhorns fan." Um, and yeah, they. I mean, obviously, you lose a three one lead. That just sucks. But, I, I mean, hey, the Warriors got beat uh, the next series anyway. So, uh, Lane Stapp Gaming said, Pacers, if they had Oladipo and Paul George today, I think they would be contenders. Yeah, but we, you know, who knows. Uh, Matt Miller said, what one I don't know, team? man. Paul George in his prime that year, uh, a couple years before he blew his knee out, when, when they were. Yeah, they were contenders. They but, they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals, I believe, and got beat. Maybe it was the year or the round before that when they got beat by the Cavs. Yeah. That that team was pretty damn good. Yeah, but they, but again, they kept running up against LeBron. They kept running they, up against LeBron. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It just sucks. It just sucks. Uh, Matt Miller said, "What one team in the East without the Bulls you think wins the championship?" Uh, I think the Knicks would have won it a couple of times, um, and then well, I think the, the Pacers. The, that the year. Eastern Conference outside uh, of the those Orlando Laker Magic. Runs, yeah, the East would have won every one of those. I think the Magic would have won. Um, if they ever get all the way through, uh, the Knicks would have won if they ever gotten all the way through. I, I just think those teams and those primes, we saw the Celtics win. We saw the Pistons win. Um, those, those, the Eastern Conference teams are just far better than the Western Conference yeah, teams. In the 80s and 90s. And, 90s. and now, it is, now it's switched. You had the yeah. Lakers and then nobody else. And then later, at the very end of it, we saw Sonics had one great year. Yep. And then Utah had two great years and that was it the suns had a great year but yeah that's about it um so we we saw jordan's relationship with gus i thought that was really cool to see uh you and i talked about this last week just a little bit but the fact that jordan really didn't have an entourage at all he surrounded himself with older guys his security detail and those were the guys that he trusted with everything everything um i I thought that was really nice to to see how that went on uh Lane Stapp Gaming said, I'm a Saints fan. Trust me, we always have struggles in the playoffs. Uh, yeah, but you won one. You know, it was it was a little while ago. Carlos said the Knicks lost the championship with the Rockets in 94 uh, in the finals when Jordan went to play baseball. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I was there. I saw it all. It sucked. 
The, the Rockets were good. They won two straight. Like, I, I get it. But either way, um, I think there were some years that the Knicks could have won the championship had it not been for the Bulls. So, either way. Uh, Steve Kerr's dad being shot in Beirut. That was an Something interesting Something I didn't story. know about. Yeah, I had no idea about that. Like, crazy to think about it. Um, you know, and, and Steve Kerr admitting he didn't get girls. Uh, he only got one scholarship offer. And he got a, a scholarship to Arizona when his dad became president of American University in Beirut. Like, the timing on that was just insane. Like, could you imagine if Steve Kerr was down there, like, the next year? I mean, it, like, if he would say he was a senior in high school and his dad took that job, he would have been down in the middle of all that. Like, no, because the rest of his family didn't go. No, his mom was down there. No, his mom wasn't. His mom stayed in UCLA, in LA. No, I thought she was they, a professor there. You watch this at all? No, I thought I did. I thought she said she got. It. Oh, she went to the UCLA president's office. Hey, you're right. Okay, sorry. I got I got twisted on that. Hey, buddy, come here. Let's talk about Michael Jordan. <laughs> all right. So apparently we're going long today. Um, all right. So Steve Kerr, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Steve Kerr is John Paxson. Bless you. Steve Kerr is John Paxson, 100. percent Like you go back and watch them, the way that they work and everything, they are. Unbelievable. So. Well, I mean, yeah, John Paxson <laughs> taught him how to do that. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, he wouldn't be John Paxson without Paxson being Paxton. Good gracious. I don't know what's going on with this boy. Uh, yes, no, you're right. He would not be John Paxson without John Paxson. 100%. 100%. Uh, and then finally, the last thing that I wrote down from Episode 9 was Jordan being poisoned in Utah. How did none of us know about this? How was this well, kept under wraps? Well, I think we all, I think it was pretty well known that it was f- food poisoning, but I don't know that, I, I never heard the story that it was That he was poisoned by somebody. Yeah. Like, I don't think we had ever heard that, and that was absolutely bonkers. Um, like, the fact that it wasn't a flu. Now, I had heard, like, it was a, uh, he was he was hung over. I had heard he had been out gambling all night. Like, I heard all kind of stuff. But I did not hear that he was food poisoned. I got no idea. So, boy, he is just all over the place today. Um, so, yeah, that that was a very interesting portion of that. And the fact that, like, so the producer of it was on an ESPN show today, by the way, and said that pizza that came, uh, everybody else was going to uh, eat a slice of it, but Jordan spit on it so that nobody else would eat it. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> I mean, it, it just it goes because he was really hungry. Everybody else has had dinner already, and he wanted the pizza, so he well, he spit had, had dinner too. He just got hungry in the middle of the night. There you go. So <laughs> McKenna said, "Hey, Jess and Link." So <laughs> Carlos, uh, no, no. Let's uh, let's start with Michael. Michael said, "Thoughts on MJ eating the whole pizza in a room full of guys?" Uh, oh, there you go. And did you hear he spit on the pizza? Yeah, that's we we heard about that. And Carlos said, "I wonder what size the pizza was since he ate the whole thing." Uh, it's probably large. I mean, I'd imagine. I don't know. I mean, if you're going to order a pizza, like, you want to make sure you got plenty. Like, what is it, a couple bucks more for large as opposed to a medium? I mean, it's, I've know. never ordered a medium pizza before in my it, life. There you go. I don't, I don't know why you would. I, I it, see, that's the thing. Would. Like, why? Like, it just it's a couple extra bucks, and if you don't eat all of it, yeah, you got a fridge. It's all good. So, either way, uh, let's jump into episode 10. The Bulls had two days rest before going to Utah, and Utah had home court. And I remember this at the time, but, like, you, you lose sight of it back then, but Utah had a better regular season record that year. The Bulls were damn good, and Utah had a better record. No, but the, the West was just bad, really bad. Yeah, and Utah was just better than everybody else. Um, yeah. Let's see. Lane Stapp Gaming said, I thought when I heard he had food poisoning, I thought he was talking about him not having the flu, but having put, yeah, yeah, he was he was poisoned. He was 100%. Yeah, it wasn't normal food poisoning. He, he was actually, we think the pizza was actually poisoned. Uh, Michael said, I think the producer also said that he did it often. He spit on, like, brownies and stuff like that <laughs> so that people wouldn't eat it. Stingy-ass man. Believe that. Uh, Matt said, how do you even poison a pizza? Like, what do they have, spoiled cheese or meat laying around? No, I'm sure. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sure they've got old meat, which it doesn't have to be that old you to can be put bad. any kind of stuff on, like x And then, and then the easiest and, way to do it, everybody, we've all seen, like, um, uh, wedding crashers. Like, just visine, visine. Just drip visine all over it. Yeah. I mean, that's a, Boom, a good done. easy ways to do it, but it's yeah. like, and it's not like it's going to kill somebody. 
Nope. It just make you. It'll make you really sick and and make you really tired for the next game. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, but yeah, so two days rest, and then you got to go to Utah, uh, where we know the air is thinner anyway. Uh, that's that's pretty intense. Uh, they talked about Michael the Mystic always present in his quote. Why would I think about a shot I haven't taken yet? I, that kind of stuck with me a little bit. Like I thought that was very interesting. Like, and I understand like you're you're always preparing for that stuff, but why would you worry about it? Right? Well, he said, "Why would I think about missing a shot I haven't taken yet?" What did I say? How, just blatantly. Oh, why, why would, would I think, think about, about a shot? A sorry, shot? Sorry, sorry, I, I think he thought about shots all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. But why would I, don't I think, think about he missing ever a shot? thought about missing a shot? Agreed. Agreed. Um, so that changes it, the quote a lot. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I I just missed because one because one <laughs> is you're not preparing, you're not thinking at all, and then the other one is I just never think about failure. Uh, let's see. Michael said, better question. Who the hell told the pizza place MJ was ordering pizza? Like, don't you keep that stuff on the low? I think they do now. I think I, Michael well, Jordan no, had but a I'm going to tell you, like, they talked about how, like, everybody kind of knew. They knew the hotel it was going to, which is the Bulls Hotel. They, like, I think people just, he had been in the league. He'd been around. He'd been coming to Utah for years to play. You, I think you just get in routines. Oh, I yes. mean, every time I go into Cleveland, I, I, I eat pizza at the same pizza place. Like, they... I'm there once a year, but they know who I am. Like they recognize me when I walk. Like right. I, and I'm not famous. I'm not anybody. I, but the, I but they know these you. Places. I think these places know. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I, I think it's they a little knew bit different somebody now. from the Bulls was ordering because it was going to the Bulls team hotel. Yes, but I, I think nowadays somebody would go pick it up and they would order it under a different name and all sorts of because they. Well, I mean, yeah, things are a lot different today. Yeah. Um, but back then, I think Michael Jordan had a knack for like trusting people and and. Expecting but we the also best. live in a different world where today, like, like th- they would be doing DNA evidence on that pizza, and and somebody would, you know, the FBI would get involved. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because that, you know, it, that kind of stuff they they pay attention to now. Back then, eh, it was just fun. It was just games. It was the nineties. Yeah, it was college prank. Uh, Jordan's kids talking about the Utah crowd. I thought that was interesting. Like that's that's the point that they bring in the kids. It's kind of a weird spot. I thought. Am I am I crazy for that? No, I mean I think they were just trying to Im- imply how bad the new talk crowd was to people who yeah. weren't around in the nineties. Um, the next thing, Rodman leaving after Game Three to go to the WCW event with Hulk Hogan, joining Nitro. joining NWO, uh, right after a finals game, missing practice and all that, and. I mean, you're not going to suspend them. Like, I, I think what Rodman said is right. Like, Phil understood to get the most out of him, I got to let him go do what he wants to do. Like, it, you can, yeah, you can find him or whatever, but I'm not going to keep him out of the game. Like, we got to have him. So, well, what are you going to do? You just let him do what he does, and you trust him. And I think that was Phil's biggest thing. As a coach, even with the Lakers, you know, it, you trust your players until they burn you. And and Rodman, to his credit, honestly, never really burned him. No, nope. came like, back, played his ass off. A hundred percent. Um, yeah, I wrote down Carmen Electra. Carmen Electra's forty eight years old. Now we we talked about this a little bit ago, but man, it, like she showed up again last night. I think she looked better at forty eight than she did like when she was with Rodman. Am I like? What, no, what are your she's, thoughts? She's pretty amazing. She's pretty smoking. Pretty amazing. Pretty, uh, <laughs> Michael said the media would go crazy with Rodman. Imagine if social media was around with Rodman. Yeah, oh, 100%. Well, so many things would be different if social media was around for throughout history. Oh, yes. Oh, without question. Without question. I mean, can we think of Wilt Chamberlain in the Me Too era? I mean, really? Well, I, I think, think about Michael Jordan with all his gambling stuff. Yeah. Like, that, that would be insane. Um, the Bulls did not close out Game 5 at home. Now, this happened multiple times. They had chances to close out series at home and this was not the only one where they they just didn't get it done. Like it seemed like they worked better under pressure. Like, and I I think there's a lot of teams that are like that. But I wonder, you know, did you feel that way? You're asking them to beat every team in five games. I, That's I'm not hard saying to in five do. Games. That has nothing to do with pressure. It's just really hard to beat somebody in five games. Agreed. But Agreed. they played almost no. He didn't play a single game seven. No, he played. It was like two games. It was the the. But they weren't in the finals. Oh no, not in the finals. No, no, you're right. You're so right. So it has nothing to do with the pressure. It's just hard to beat somebody in five. 
but give them one extra game to prepare and, and get tape on you, and it's over. That, that's a good point. That's a good I, point. I, you can't knock somebody for losing in game, and not winning in game five, but also never seeing game seven. Like, that's insane. That's okay. That's you have a valid point. He played two game sevens his entire career. But I I look at it as they were more capable of winning of closing out a series on the road That's as opposed irrelevant. to closing it. No, disagree with that completely. Hey, I'll let you disagree all you want to. But, I'm, because I'm here's the thing: I see if it. they had home field advantage, they wouldn't have closed it out on the road. It would have been closed out at home. True. So, okay. Okay. In that some of those cool. years, they did have home field advantage. In some of them, they didn't. It's just it's just kind of how it falls. Yeah. Hard to somebody in five. Game six ends it a lot more than not. And, you know, game sevens are rare. Yeah, and, and a road team winning a game seven is incredibly rare. Incredibly rare. Uh, after game six, Michael Jordan's quote, they can't quit or they can't win until we quit. I thought that was pretty awesome. I mean, that's a good quote. So, I mean, he's, he's got a ton of good quotes. Uh, did you notice how much media was in his hotel room after that? Yeah. That was pretty insane. I mean, it just a, a ton of people. <clears throat> um, I think that was his security team. I think that was his entourage. Uh, with all the cameras and the lights and everything? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think maybe. he let those people in to do this documentary they knew they were doing that. They knew they were having this footage put together for so long. Even when they were like sneaking Rodman, that wasn't normal media because they were hiding him from the media. But how did we have cameras on him? Uh, that's, yeah, yeah. And the mics. producers of the documentary were completely different. Now that's that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, Matt Miller said, "I would love to watch Kobe and Shaq versus MJ Pippen Rodman." Yeah, hundred percent. I mean that, but I mean obviously you got the same coach for both of them. So I mean who knows? Uh, Damian Estrada said, "Damn, I miss WCW." And Lane said, I'm a WWE me, fan. Me, that, what all I got from that was is, man, Monday Nitro used to be the shit. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Um, Lane Stapp Gaming said, I'm a WWE fan. I never knew he did that with the NWO, especially during a big series for a championship. Yeah. yeah. So the next week after the series is over with, Carl uh, Malone signs an, in uh, a WCW deal yep. and comes back. And Carl Malone and DDP team up to fight Hogan and Rodman in the next like SummerSlam or whatever it was yeah. uh, pay per view. Yeah, I remember. I remember that like it was yesterday. That's uh, Jose said. Tony Kukoc scores twenty points. It was that close. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. No, this was this was. So we're talking about five, nine, right? Not ten. Yeah. Uh, well, no, yeah. we're talking about ten now. Okay, that was Kukoc's best series of all of them. Yes. Before the before the sixth ring, Kukoc never really showed up or had a great season. That's when Kukoc finally started hitting his stride. Oh yeah. Now he had big moments, um, and he, and he played playoffs. some, but not in the playoffs. No, not in the playoffs. He never he never showed up. And and like Steve Kerr's like some ungodly shooting percentage or whatever in the playoffs and and stuff. And it's unbelievable. But realistically, until he hits that game winning shot, they covered in nine. He he come up super small in the first two years of the playoffs, and he hit one big shot to end the game, and and win the finals in uh in in for for ring number five. Yeah, well to to what well, no not even the finals was it? It was the it was finals. Oh, yeah, it, was it was to the win. Finals, it was to win. The, it was to end it all. That's right. That's right. Uh, Michael asked, "Do they get seven? Uh, no. I, I I I think I think it's not likely. I think they had a really strong chance." But that, I that team I was getting older. I don't. Jordan was gassed at this thing. Pippen was getting beat up, and then Pippen was never great and, after and that. It Rodman was wasn't focused anymore. Was done. Yeah. Rodman wouldn't have come back. I'm going to tell you that right now. They wouldn't have brought Rodman back for the one year, so then they got to replace him. Um, and, and I don't know who you're replacing him with. Without Rodman, they don't win at all. I mean, you do see Jordan still needed teammates for number six. Oh, yeah. Like, he talks about how, you know, I, you know, I about died when – when Pippen went out of the game in, in game six, he was just like, I don't, I don't know how we're going to win this. Like, I don't know how this is going to happen. I can't do this all by myself. I need somebody with me. That's when you saw how little the rest of those players, because everyone names off all these other guys that played with him. Oh, he had Kukoc and he had Kerr and he had all these guys because we know their names. No, 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 no. 
We only know their names because they played with Jordan. Because Jordan knew without Pippen, the rest of those guys were worthless. Yeah. Just that team was shit. Um, let's see. Matt Miller said Rodman is 39 at that point. Rodman would have been 39. They, uh, they would have played San Antonio who had Duncan and Robinson like that. Yes, that would have been no. tough. Well, yeah. and that's, so Bill Simmons talks about this on their podcast last week. I believe they got into it before this week's thing happened. Um, cause they kind of knew where it was going. But the reason the, the Utah gave them hell was because Utah's matchup with Carl Malone was so bad for them because finally they ran into a player Jordan couldn't guard because of size and position. Yeah. Okay. And Pippen really couldn't guard him because of size. They, these are two on ball defenders and they can't, they don't really play big men and they have no big man that really can hang or guard with them. And uh, Rodman who used to be elite, his skills have diminished so much by this point in time, not from the part of it. Just, He's old. He's getting old. It just yeah. life is hitting him. Now you're having to play a team with two of those guys that, the next is, year against the Spurs. Built to I be able don't to think you. they would have won, but I I appreciate Jordan's aspect of we should have got to play until we lost yeah. in basketball. You keep the court until somebody beats you. A hundred percent. And I have an appreciation for that. And I hate that we didn't get to see it, but. We, we got to get out of the aspect that the only reason he was great is because he never lost a championship. And had he played for seven and lost seven, I don't know that that would have hurt his legacy. We got to stop that. The fact that he could have made it to it, that one, yeah. to a seventh, is an unbelievable feat. Uh, Matt Miller said, just like 94, 95, I think they would have split with the Rockets. Yeah. I think they would have, I don't think they sweep both of those. People say, oh, they would have had eight if he played both. Man, I don't know that they get eight. I know they get eight because those rocket teams are really good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Michael said he was built differently. Imagine if he would have went and joined the Jazz the next year. Yeah. <laughs> like the Durant well, thing. So the, he never the thing that. that people speculate about if, and Simmons brought this up because this is outside of what we got from the doc, and this is where you need uh, a, an NBA expert that's kind of an NBA historian. Um, him and Ryan Russillo talk about this on their podcast that came out today. Um, they, they, brought up and talked about if we don't have the lockout and we have a normal off season and a normal season start, they fully believe that Jordan would have come back. He wouldn't have played for the bulls ever again. And he probably would have ended up with the Knicks. Now, because we had this weird off season, the Knicks went and traded for the trails pretty well. Yep. And therefore they didn't have the trade assets to get a guy like Jordan or the salary cap to get a guy like Jordan. 100%. Um, but if we w- would have had a normal offseason, maybe he could have he could have found ways to, to make that happen. Um, and then I would have liked to have seen what he would have done with that New York team. Uh, we'll roll through some of these comments really quick and answer uh, as much as we can. And then I've got three more notes that are super fast. Uh, Lane Staff Gaming said, if Michael Jordan was playing now with all the best talent like LeBron, Curry, et cetera, would he still be uh, the greatest of all time? Yes, it's just a different mindset. Those it's other guys a, wouldn't be as great just because he's not going to – he needs help, but he yeah. ain't going to let you take 20 shots. I mean, Kerr even talked about – Kerr was the second best scorer outside of Pippen on that team, and he would get he was lucky to get five shots a game. Yeah, and, and you better make them count. Otherwise, he won't get the ball again. That's so. I mean, so just think about the volume of, like, Clay Thompson and all these other guys in the world. Like, they don't – you don't know their names – because they're only shooting it five to six times instead of 35 times. Exactly. Uh, Matt Miller said, look at 95. They didn't have Horace Grant. They suffered. They needed that gritty rebounder to be the third guy. Yeah, yeah they needed a rebounder. They yeah. needed – he always had to have a big man. Well, And, and a defensive guy. Like, it, you got to yes. have somebody that can play defense and get rebounds. Like, period. Yes. Uh, Damien said, do you think MJ would have returned to the Bulls instead of going to the Wizards? Uh, uh, well, that's the question we just answered. Uh, would the Bulls have won a seven championship? Uh, Michael said he was built differently. Imagine if he went uh, – let's see. Michael said he's not like the self-proclaimed King James. Um, it, no, he didn't. They're very different. Uh, he did call himself Black Jesus. So, I think that no, and King James. No, a reporter called himself Black Jesus. No, no, no. He called himself that to Reggie Miller. Like, remember. I thought, I thought Reggie's, a teammate of Reggie no. said, don't ever piss off Black Jesus. No, no, no. Michael Jordan told him that. No. Yeah, he, he said, well, don't I'll ever talk this. trash Jordan to Black Jesus. Jordan jokingly 
kind of at what point they slipped it in the dock and they never really lingered on it and stayed on it long. And they got out of it on the bus. Somebody said something about God and Jordan said, you're talking to God. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and then he laughed. He was like, no, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's a, he I, said that in the, uh, in the security room. But maybe like, it was then. Maybe it was in a. It was in a no, time was, where they were just it was, hanging out. It was a security room. Somebody was asking for tickets. I remember this now. That's uh, somebody right. asking for tickets, and he he said, "I don't care where they are. They could be up there next to God." And he said, "God just gave you the tickets." Like, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's it. That's it. <laughs> God gave him the ticket, and then he tried to like walk it back. He tried to walk it back because he didn't like doing that. But but he he you know, thought highly of himself. Kind of like, I, you like you gotta God. you gotta have that gene. You gotta have that if you're gonna be a champion, man. Uh, Jose said Pacers versus Knicks made it hard for the Pacers to beat the Bulls. Uh, oh, 100%. 100%. Ooh, yes. I mean, come on. Warm down. Uh, Matt Miller said there's more possessions now, so there are more shots to go around. Yeah, the game is completely different now. Like, trying to compare eras is, is just – You just you just It's can't. foolish. You just yeah. can't. And, like, Jordan didn't shoot threes at that kind of rate, but do you think if he played in this rate, he wouldn't take one offseason and shoot 10,000 threes? And then come back and be the best three point shooter in the game. Oh, I'd, like, I'd believe because I say the same thing about Larry Bird. Like Larry Bird never shot three pointers. Like he he would if he played today. But but a lot he of did. his career they didn't even have a three point line. Like but yeah, most of his career they didn't. And then when they implemented, he they just wasn't part of the game. Like yeah. you shot maybe three threes a game a team. Yeah, you take the higher percentage shot. Like we yeah. didn't have that was the just the way the game was played back then. The math is different. We see things differently now, and I fully believe that those great players then would dominate now, strictly because they would learn to play the game the way it is. Yes, uh, Michael said basketball has changed drastically since then and has gotten much worse. MJ's NBA is black and white compared to today's NBA. One hundred percent, exactly what we just said. Now I do believe that I'm not one of these guys where older is always better. I I think the prime window of basketball was the Lakers-Celtics rivalry through the Jordan-Pistons-Bulls. Yes. And I think that was the window where basketball was at its greatest. Through that, you had the Lakers dynasty, you had the Celtics dynasty, a Celtics dynasty, second one. Then you had Bad Boys-Pistons dynasty, and then, then you, you had, had Bulls. the Bulls dynasty. And in there, the Rockets get two. Well, I guess that would be the Rockets dynasty, too. I mean, that's a... That's a they, two they in a row is pretty good, yeah. West. Yeah. yeah. So... You know, and then you had a lot of other great teams. Those Suns teams were great. Those Sonics teams were great. Those, those, uh, um, so, and this is all kind of in the same ten year span. And now every year we start the season with three good teams. This year we were really excited because we thought there was five teams that might have a shot at winning the title oh, before yeah. the season started. Like, like that's insane. Oh, a hundred percent. But uh, now I will say this: the salary cap and and the rules and whatnot were different back then. You couldn't go just build uh, a, a team, team, a super team. Well, look at like, who the third scoring option was on these teams. So the Bulls' third scoring option was it, it, it became Ku Coach, but you're talking about a guy that you know got one scholarship gets offer in college on his best game. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy. It's crazy to think about. It. I mean, if you look at the late, I mean, the Lakers are the second best team in the NBA right now. Um, and they've got Anthony Davis and LeBron, and I mean Kuzma hadn't exactly been killer. You got Rajon Rondo. You got, I mean, you know who who's their third best? I mean, it is what it is. Well, right? I don't, I don't know, but the game's just it's just different. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's completely different. different. Completely different. Um, Jose, the competition's different though. Like there aren't any other really good teams. There's, there's, like I said, there's five. There's five really good teams in the league, and that's it. That's the list. Carlos said, do you guys agree that the 95 Bulls team would beat the Warriors team with Durant, or does it depend on the era? I feel that the Bulls team would win in both eras. Uh, I mean, if you I, I do th- think, but if they were going to play in, in the today's era, then we, you would you would need the Bulls team to transition how they play to win. Yeah. I they couldn't have played the way they played in 95 and win. I think the Bulls' mentality was better than the Warriors'. I think the Warriors were just so much better than everybody else because they had more talent than everybody else. It was just pure talent. Yeah. Um, but I, but I they don't also think... didn't have anybody else to play against them that had any type of killer instinct whatsoever. Yeah. Scotty, listen, Clay Thompson and Steph Curry would not be who they are if they had to play against Michael Jordan and and, and, and they're not the same players when they don't have Draymond Green on the court. No. And Draymond like, wouldn't have been the same guy if he actually had to go up against um, a, a guy like Horace Grant. Or a guy like uh, uh, Carl Malone, uh, or the Worm, whatever, so, or Dennis Rodman, yeah. whatever. Dennis Rodman, that's it. 
Yeah, uh, but let's like, see. Uh, Matthew said, also, the three-point line is like two feet further back now. When the Bulls were shooting those long threes in practice uh, at Utah, that's a normal shot now. Like, yeah, it was it was pretty long, but yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely the game has changed. The game has completely the game's changed. changed. The game's just it's just that's changed. The but there's no it. doubt that those guys from that era could learn to play this way. The problem is, is none of the guys in this era, outside of LeBron and probably Kawhi and Giannis, because of the bodies they have, I don't think any of them survive in the era back then. It was just too physical. Yeah, they get beat up on. I think Kevin Durant would get beat the hell up. I think Steph is too small. Like, the reason we have the stigma that small guys can't play in the NBA is because we all were products of growing and watching the NBA in the 90s. Yes. And we saw, you're a little man, you can't play. Oh, yeah. You You, just can't. You just get beat up. Unless you you get the beat out of you. Well, now you don't, but it's hard to forget how hard it was for little guys back then. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you, so you we had to still have that stigma carried over, and it's not there. Yeah. Jose said, yes, preach, preach. And Damien said, MJ is God. If he was at the lottery draft last year, the Bulls would have definitely gotten Zion last year. So, <laughs> you're probably right. All right, last three notes I got for this. Uh, Scotty giving credit to Jerry Krause. Was good. Like, they waited until the last episode to do it, but somebody finally talked good about Jerry Krause. Look, he built that team. He built yeah. them from the ground up. He drafted Scotty Pippen. He drafted Michael Jordan. Like He didn't draft Jordan. At, oh, he he didn't draft, but he did draft all the pieces that went around him. He drafted and everybody around Jordan's championship teams. He built the team. He Not a single player was there before he got guys. there. Yeah, he, he traded and signed guys that he needed to to fit and build the right team he for Phil Jackson. He tried to get Charles Michael Barkley instead of, uh, of Dennis Rodman. Yeah. He tried. He couldn't do it. That's a good GM's job. He's trying to put the best players around his guy now, to build this dynasty. Now, did he, like, I, I can see where he was coming from with breaking up the team. I do think it was a bad decision, but I see where he was coming from. And and Jerry Reinsdorf said the same thing at the end of it with, you know, it, he he said the his reasons, I think, may have been sound, right? The value for these players with their contracts coming out, up and everything. Yes. It, they were their their value was not the same as Today, it would today. A hundred percent, every analytical person in the world would have done exactly what Jerry Reinstorn did. Yeah, and you, Jerry Krause. A hundred percent of them would have done it in today's basketball. Now, now we keep maybe, Jordan and we let everybody else go. And if Jordan won't play, sorry, yeah, because yeah. they care about value and analytics. And the analytics say you don't pay for past performances, which means Pippen's gone. Yeah. You don't pay for past performances, which means Kerr's gone. These guys are going to demand too much money to continue to play, and they're not worth it. Not that they're not good, they're just not worth the dollars they're asking for. Different. Yes, incredibly different. Uh, Build young plow- talent around stars. Now, the, the whole thing with – now, I will say this. I think you made a mistake by saying that it was Phil Jackson's last year. Now, I, I understand they had different differences of, of – uh, excuse me, differences of opinions – on a lot of different things, right? But I, I don't think that you can fire a coach after winning six championships in eight years. That's just ridiculously dumb. Now, the Grizzlies did it with Lionel Hollins, not after a championship, but after making it to the Western Conference Finals, and then they let him go. Now, you can say that's smart, that's dumb, whatever, um, but the Grizzlies never got back there, and the Bulls hadn't been back either. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Jose said... No, all- the, Phil, the Phil thing is different than all the players, Okay. The field situation is different, and I get it from a GM standpoint. This is where he let ego get in his way. Yes. Coaches yes. were now starting to make more money than general managers, and that wasn't the case. Before yes. Phil, before uh, Pat Riley, before the premier coaches, Larry Bird, coaches didn't make that much money. Agreed. Agreed. And, and they made about the same as a general manager, if not a little less than the GM. And now – they're getting to make more, and he took it personal. And that's, listen, that was his fault. That was his downside. But you can't blame everything on him. No, no, no. He made that. good decisions. He made great decisions. He uh, was an unbelievable personnel guy. He yes. really was. Oh, he absolutely was. Uh, the last thing I've got written down, Phil lighting the paper in the can. So his his whole thing about uh, the last time they would ever see each other together, you know, all that kind of mess, uh, incredibly impactful very important part of this documentary. Jordan, for the first time, really showed his emotional side, showed how much he appreciated the other guys on the team as opposed to 
pushing them because there was nothing to work towards anymore. Yeah. Like so once you get past that point, then you can really let your your true colors out and show everybody, hey, you meant a lot to me, et cetera. Jordan writing a poem was interesting, an interesting way of going about it. Everybody and, and they said it was an incredibly emotional meeting. I was uh very interested in that. I wasn't shocked by it because it, you would almost expect it at that point. But I thought it was a good way to end the documentary talking about that and you know, them saying just how important that meeting was where they put all the papers in a, in a coffee can, they turn off the lights, they light the, uh, the papers, and everything just goes up in smoke. I would have loved to have seen what some of these guys wrote, what they said. Obviously, they didn't let the, uh, the documentarians in the meeting because that's, that's a very personal meeting, even, even more personal than documentaries and whatnot. Um, I'm glad that they didn't. I would have loved to have seen it, but I'm I'm glad that that part of it was kept to them, that they have that for just themselves. I thought it was a great way to close out the documentary. O- overall, this was fantastic. I thought it was great. I mean, it, it, it gave us exactly what we needed at a time that we really needed it. No, I agree. I completely agree. Anything so. that, uh, that stood out to you that uh, that I didn't write out? No, I mean, that was, I mean, we, we covered most all of it. Yeah, so. That's, I, I figured, like, I, I had a whole thing of notes and a whole thing of notes uh, last week and this week and whatnot, but I mean, it's it was such a good documentary, so many people talking about it, and I mean, it's stuff that you and I remember. Like, I, I'm watching those games back, and I'm like, I remember watching this live. Like, and I was a, I was a kid, but I remember all of this, watching it yeah. live, and it was just riveting television. Riveting. ESPN did a good job with this. I was, uh, I was happy. They are showing on Wednesday night... Uh, the final game six in HD with all the behind the scenes stuff and whatnot, like different footage and everything. And ESPN, I think, is going to do massive numbers for that as well. I think a lot of people are going to watch it. Uh, I I plan on it. I know I'm going to DVR it, uh, but depending upon when it happens, like when it actually, I think it comes on at what eight central. I don't know. Who knows? I'll, I'll come in on the fourth quarter probably. <laughs> probably. There's just no reason to rewatch an entire game like that. And I, especially yeah. after this doc, I just saw it. I just saw all the meaningful moments. Yeah. So all we're going to get in watching the game is all the dead time. I know you're probably right. You're probably right. And I get to see Kukoc's 20 points because he didn't show any of them in the doc. No, you get that right. They didn't show it. I mean, they didn't show a whole lot of the actual game to get us into that point, but you know, they showed us the important stuff. That's what matters. Uh, is there anything else that we need to hit today? That's it, brother. That is it. We went a little long, but hopefully you guys were entertained. That's what we strive to do every day. If you're new, we appreciate you hopping in. Everybody that jumped in on the chat, we hit well over 100 again today. You guys are fantastic for that. We do appreciate it. Share the show out. Tell your friends about it. Make sure that you are subscribed on whatever platform you are watching or listening on. Uh, We thank everybody that came in from Costa Rica and across the country. All you young dudes, keep coming in. We appreciate you. Uh, But for now, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment.